Hi, I'm Ryan of ICOC Cebu and welcome to part one of Stay Home, Stay Pure. This is a three-part video encouraging you through the scriptures on how to stay and protect your purity while at home quarantine. From the beginning of this pandemic, we always hear this line from the authorities that the goal is to flatten the curve. While we are hoping that our community quarantine will flatten the curve, many are beginning to feel that this is not actually flattening the curves of our bellies, right? On a more serious note, this quarantine is really not an easy time for everyone. Because as we are doing our part to flatten the curve of this pandemic by staying at home, the curves of our emotions, the curves of our anxieties, worries, or even needs are becoming challenging and it inflates by the day. And so as a Christian in quarantine, I realize that if we are not careful, this can slowly but surely affect our spirituality in a negative way, especially in our purity. Because of this quarantine, online activities inside our homes is high and so as the temptation to compromise in our purity. In case you don't know, a 2018 article in, in the Inquirer Technology reports that of this headline, for the fourth straight year, Pornhub stats show that Filipinos spend the most time on the world's biggest porn site. And it is said it is mostly viewed in mobile phones. And mind you, these are 2018 figures way before this COVID-19 outbreak. Do you want to know what's the present pornography viewing statistics due to COVID? A recent 2020 March article by Insider.com said, porn views have sharply increased in some countries since coronavirus quarantine started worldwide. This is scary news, brothers and sisters. Yes, our society is finding ways to flatten this, this COVID-19 curve so it will no longer infect our health, affect our economy. But as Christians, we have to open our eyes and see a very dangerous curve rising, the curve of sin and compromise in purity that infects not only our health, but our souls, our marriages, our relationships, our families, and most especially, our relationship with God. Matthew 5 verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Scripture reminds us why purity is very important. Because by it, we see God. By it, we connect and experience God in our lives. No wonder Satan will do his best to mess with our purity because it will also mess and destroy our relationship with God. This fight will not be easy if we fight it alone. And that's why Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a young man or a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. To keep us in this path of purity, God's word is what we need. But don't forget, so as our obedience, the living according to the Word of God. That is why in these three videos, we will not just talk about God's Word, but it will challenge you to obey God's Word at every end of this video because it is in this way we can stay in the path of purity. So let us go to God's Word. Allow me to talk about a, and study the not so glorious story of King David in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2 to 5. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walk around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. 
and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanliness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. I'd like to remember David as the famous boy who won the epic battle against the giant Goliath. But here, we see David losing a battle of purity of his heart. A sad story indeed, but I believe this is not here to shame David, but for us to open our eyes and learn from his life. One of the important key to fighting our purity is this, awareness. And I learned four things that we must be fully aware or else we can fall like David here. First thing, temptations can enter our homes. Who would have thought that the arena of his battle, the threat of his purity, was on the roof of his palace? It wasn't far from his palace or from his place. He was just in the confines of his home. If you can see such a detail of someone bathing, I, I should say his temptation was just at a viewing distance. And I thought about our quarantine today. Although we are in the confines of our homes, we can still see the world around us, right? How? Just go online. And we basically see everything at a viewing distance. With a swipe, we see the food of our neighbors. With a swipe, the whereabouts of our friends. We even walk on roads and entered buildings we never entered before. We even entered into homes and see the lives of people of whom we never met before. With our gadgets, tablets, computers, TV, all in the home, these are digital roof decks, platforms, digital windows, where we can see just about anything at viewing distance. Because of this, we don't have to go out of our homes to be tempted, but simply go online. At a viewing distance, we encounter and fall into temptation of envy, materialism, worldliness, greed, lust, hate, and many more. Internet pornography has even entered into our homes. CovenantEyes.com, a site whose goal is to fight against internet temptation, shared some statistics that will shock you. According to a survey conducted by the Barna Group in the U.S. in 2014, 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women say they watch porn at least once a month. 43% of senior pastors and youth pastors say they have struggled with pornography in the past. If we are not careful, these temptations will freely enter our homes than into our hearts. If we don't want to make the mistake David did, be aware of this reality and start closing those windows more than opening it. Second, the real battle is within. When presented with a temptation, David could have declined, but instead, the Bible says he sent someone to find out about her, meaning he pursued it, he entertained it, he clicked it. Why? Was it because Bathsheba was there? And we always say this, ah, I was tempted because of something I saw or something popped up on my screen and that's why I got tempted. While these are outside factors that contribute to our falling for the temptation, the book of James make it clear for us to understand how we fall for temptations. James chapter 1 verse 13 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by what? Their own evil desire 
and entice. Then after the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. James was saying, before we blame Bathsheba, let us look at David's heart. Because what dragged him to her was his own desire. And sadly, sad to say, at this time, it was evil desires. I thought of a similar story of temptation but yet having a very different response. I'm talking about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. When we read Genesis chapter 39 in verse 6 to 8, it says there, So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well-built and handsome, and after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, "Come Come to bed with me. But he refused. In verse 10, And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Much more intense temptation, right? Joseph was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but when presented with a more than a viewing distance temptation of Potiphar's wife wanting to sleep with him, day after day, what was his response? He refused. Not just a day, but day after day too. Why? In Genesis chapter 39, verse 10, he said, How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin? against God. Joseph had the right desire. He had the right heart compared to David. The real battle is really between you and your evil desires. Yes, environment is a factor, but Sheba is a factor to trigger temptation. Internet is a factor. Pop-ups is a factor. But if we have the right desire, and that is to please God, not self, then Like Joseph, we are able to refuse to go with the temptation or even get close to temptation. So the question is, what is our desire lately at home? Is it to please God or to please self? Your answer is so crucial because it determines the outcome of this battle. And I should say David's desire that dragged him to pursue sin was this seemingly harmless desire for self comfort the third thing we can learn is the danger of comfort in verse 11 it was clear this was springtime when battles resume and that is why the bible says when kings go off to war but he remained in jerusalem i believe he was having this desire to just rest from the battle Let me just lie low a bit at this time, extend my winter vacation. Let me just focus on myself for a while. While others do the fighting in the front lines, let them put on their full armor, carry that sword, but not me today. Are we in spiritual vacation mode? Are we resting from spiritual battle? Let them do the praying reading the bible sharing the bible let them serve but not me today let me just relax chill watch some tv youtube browse the net play some computer games you know i need to catch up with my friends the moment we rest from the spiritual battle is the moment we are most vulnerable to satan's attack that is why if we want to stay in this path of purity When in the spiritual battle, we have to always gear up with a full armor, even if it's uncomfortable. Like this COVID-19 virus, I have to gear up like this, going to out, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it looks crazy and, and paranoid, because I simply don't want to take chances. Spiritually, all the more, we cannot take chances. We cannot drop the sword, the word of God. We cannot take off our prayer time, our discipling time, and just drop the full armor of God simply because we're at home quarantine. 
brothers and sisters, we have to be beware of comfort because it disarmed David of his guards and so the enemy got him. How? By deception. The fourth and the last thing, the enticing bait. But Sheba was just a bait, Sheba. If we are fishes today and we see this worm, we call this my lucky day or a great opportunity. But for a fisherman, they call it the bait. And the goal is to get you by deceiving you to think that this worm is harmless and very promising behind it is a deadly hook. There is a Chinese ancient military treatise dating roughly 5th century BC entitled The Art of War. The work was attributed to this ancient Chinese military strategist Sun Ji, who was long been considered to be one of history's finest military tacticians and analysts because his teachings and strategies formed the basis of advanced military training for centuries to come. And he wrote, and I quote, and this is what he said, All warfare is based on deception. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe we are near. Hold out baits to entice the enemy. Feign or pretend disorder and crush him. Attack him where he is unprepared. Appear where you are not expected. Satan will tell us, stay home. You are safe. Don't be paranoid. You are so far away from temptations of this world. That browsing, that video, or that movie, or chat, that game, it's harmless. It's unable to affect you because you're a Christian, right? You have the Spirit of God. Brothers and sisters, don't be deceived. Satan knows you are still a fish, and he will make sure you'll get hooked. That is why, be aware the temptations don't usually appear ugly or dangerous. If things we see seem beautiful and appealing to our senses, to our comfort, be very careful. It might just be a bait. As I close, I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 11. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Today, God is setting us up for victory by helping us to be aware that temptations can enter into our homes and that the real battle is not just outside, but within our hearts. There is danger in comfort, and we cannot just grab everything that is enticing, for it can be the enemy's bait. My hope is that you will be very honest with your heart as you answer the questions at the end of this video and be open to share and discuss your answers with your D group. I'm looking forward to see you in our part two till our next video. Stay home, stay pure.